Welcome to my show. My name is Marcel Johnson, and this is A Freedom Experience. Hey, yo, so look, in the intro song, right, I was saying, get it, Drew, get it, Drew, get it, get it, Drew, get it, Drew, get it, Drew, get it. And he stopped it when this came on for y'all and said, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. Like, we just be having a ball behind the scenes. I got to check it out. So, man, I want to formally introduce you to my boy. His name is Drew Bayora. He is a musician. He is a songwriter. But most importantly, he's a music instructor. Yeah, let's go, bro. Let's go. So I'm happy to have you. I'm yeah. excited that you stopped through. So in case y'all don't know, man, so I just recently met Drew at an event that I was hosting at. And my boy was uh, behind the scenes doing the music. So, you know, my boy Youssef was talking to him because he's a musician. And me and Drew now is a part of a group in Pittsburgh where we're coming together to worship and to basically just make songs and develop like art and creativity for God. So he's a vocal coach. That's something that I really need to speak. So if you need a vocal coach, if you need somebody to help you arrange music and instruments, how many instruments do you play? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Some better than others. You know? yeah, yeah, but bro is so talented and he's gifted. And that's why I feel like God is so strategic with who I have on the show. And he wanted Drew to be on here because my guest who was supposed to be on here couldn't fly in from Atlanta. And Drew happened to just hit me. And I'm like, ooh, God, I see what you're doing. So, Drew, man, I just want to thank you for stopping past. I want to get into some questions. To keep it real with y'all, I did, you know, usually I have question cards with people's name and all their information that I want to ask them. But for Drew, we're just going to keep it a stack and just be regular. You feel me? We're just going to be real. So, I'll hold the question card just because it makes me feel better. But <laughs> but there's just, just like a raw interview, bro. So, first of all, I want to ask you, how did you get into music? So, I... I took some lessons when I was younger, uh, when I was maybe five or six. But my, okay. So my parents don't play anything at all. At all? Mm -mm. So you don't come from a musical family? Well, my, my grandfather and my grandmother, who I never met, she died when, wow. I, when my mom was pretty young. Okay. Uh, they were both musicians. They both kind of just played everything. Yeah, it just, comes down generationally. Yeah, it skipped. Like, skipped a generation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, my, my uncle played a little bit. Um, and But... I, I took lessons when I was younger, but I wasn't super into it, you know, practicing. If, it's, uh, if, if you can't get into it in a fun way, you kind yeah. of just tune out when you're young. So when I was about 15, I had a guitar lying around. I picked it up and realized, oh, I can, like, play some songs on the radio. Wow. And, and, and I kind of got into it for myself to where it was fun, you know. Wow. And I think that that's so creative because a lot of times we don't even notice our gifts. Like, we're blinded to our gifts and we kind of fall into it. But that didn't happen by accident. Yeah. So what type of music was fun for you to play and like, you know what I'm saying? What was like your vat back then? Yeah, so um, we had, when I was 15, uh, I was, I guess, a freshman in high school. Okay. We, we moved, um, we, we started going to a different church, right? And I mm. started playing um, or realizing there was a, a place to play on the worship team. So for me, music has always been a social thing. Like it's, I love sitting by myself. Uh, at a piano or just with a guitar and just playing but there's something different that happens when you play with other people yeah and so that, that unity that unity yeah that's really what it was it was like oh i can use this uh what i'm practicing to to like communicate and, and mm. be in a group you know use music to communicate so would you say you had like some communication issues as a kid and then you found like music as an outlet yeah i would say that like um Growing up, I, I think I was always kind of, I was around older, older people a lot. Yeah, that explains your old yeah. soul. Yeah, yeah that, that's a big part of it. <laughs> yeah. So, so grow, you know, and when you kind of have that vibe, kids can pick on you and stuff, you know. Yeah. And I kind of took that, started playing guitar and kind of found like a, 
mm. somewhat of an identity in that. You yeah. Know, like, Id- identity is a, a whole loaded topic, but I think when, when you're young, you're trying to find yourself. I was into sports a little bit too, but okay. really. What sports did you play? Uh, I played football. Okay. And then, yeah, you're kind of big. Drew's like, how tall are you? Probably like 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, yeah, he's 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, so football seems like a good sport for you to play, but just because you're big or you're tall doesn't mean you have to do those things. Yeah. Sometimes it's something else. So, you know what I mean? A lot of people feel like, oh, you're big. You got to play basketball. Mm-hmm. You got to play football. They kind of push that on you. Was that something that happened to you? For sure. Yeah. Wow. How kinda, did you deal with that? Uh, I, I was into the sports thing, but I wasn't super athletic. So yeah. That, like, you know, you start 7th, 8th grade and you can kind of get by, but then... You start getting into <laughs> high school, it's kind of like okay, <laughs> the truth. Yeah, you know, f- and our, our football team wasn't great. You yeah, know? we got we got kind of beat up on. So, uh, and then in eleventh grade, so I played football ninth and tenth grade. Okay, but I was you know playing guitar. Eleventh grade, I joined the marching band. Kinda wow, strangely, like so in twelfth grade, I was gonna play football again. Okay, but I um, was at Kennywood. I tried to jump over somebody, you know, kind of horse playing. Right in front of the fans or Doing the most. Uh huh. Literally doing the most, the most. <laughs> right. So I go to jump over, leapfrog my buddy. Okay. He sticks his arms out mm. and I die. So this is three days before football camp, right? I'm supposed to go football camp. I dive into the pavement. My right sh- uh, elbow right. chipped. Chipped. This, yeah. And this wrist. The most. Broke. Yeah. So I had a, a hairline fracture in this wrist. So this is, you know, this is the guitar wrist. So that was just like, God, like, you're not playing sports. It's not yeah, for you. Yeah, kind of. Wow. Yeah. It's so crazy because this is the reason why I tackle childhood identity. Because yeah. Drew's like, you're almost 30, right? Yeah. Or something like that. So what I'm saying is, like, a lot of our experiences and trauma start when we're a kid. And even when we're adults, we're still affected by that. And we don't realize we're affected by it. Like, yeah. you being bullied on the fact that you had, like, an older soul, yeah. you were more mature, and then you had to use music as an outlet to communicate that. Mm-hmm. So how did you deal with that bullying? Yeah, I, it was definitely tough. Um, yeah. You know, and so, so I, I went to church, so, you know, you have a certain kind of social group yeah. in church. and But in school, you know, it's kind of the Wild West. It's kind of, you Facts. know, when the teachers aren't around. Um, so I, I, that was definitely a tough thing, just navigating. And, and like you said, you know, a lot of those childhood traumas, like if you can wrap your head around that five year old or seven year old that had a certain social yeah. interaction that, yeah. that is deriving your, your actions, your patterns. Your actions. Yeah, your yeah. pathology. This is one thing, like, I don't think everybody needs to go to college, but throughout my college experience, I've learned so many detailed things. And one of the things was pathology yeah. and really looking at the patterns of your behavior from childhood into adult life and being able to tie those parallels together to develop and break old cycles and toxic patterns. And it's just been remarkable. And I love hearing people's story like yours, where you use music to be able to break that pattern, to yeah. break that cycle. And now I can see why when you walk, you're like an instrument. Like music, we was playing, so if you come on a Freedom Experience, we got worship music playing, we got hip-hop, we got all different type of stuff. Drew came in and immediately start playing his guitar, like just start vibing out with us. And the crazy part is that we didn't ask him to do that. He's going to perform for y'all too. He has his guitar here. He's going to do a song or something. So let's get into songwriting. Yeah. What is that process like for you? So for me, I, I've been in a season for the past few years where... Um, so, like you asked, when I was about 15, I, I really got into music for myself. Okay. And, and the cool thing about, like, getting into music now as opposed to maybe 30 years ago is that the, the technology to record and, yeah. and, and to do all that yeah. stuff, like, it, there's no <laughs> limits beside your skill and, mm. and your practice doing it and your vision. Wow. You know? Wow. So, I was, you know, fortunate and blessed enough to be able to get... Uh, have a computer and, and start recording like right when I was learning how to play yeah. um, and so you know I, I would edit and stuff and there's a, a certain certain point I kind of realized like if I really put my effort into learning how to play music and how to express it through my body like all right. the stuff that I'm doing with the recording right. will be even easier or better and come together quicker Right. so for the past few years I've been super into that kind of mode of figuring out how do you like 
the engineering side, mm -hmm. the engineering and like the productive side of it or the, yeah. the producing side of it. And, and how does like, how does an idea come through your body and make it into music? And wow! It, through improv, like improvisation, come on, and composition. You teach that, but I wanted to ask you: How do you songwrite? Like, how do you get into writing? Do you just sit still and be quiet? What's your process like? Yeah, so so it's related, right? So so the the feeling, it's like it's it's really acting uh, for me. You know, I love it, that. It's acting okay. a certain way, right? You're, yeah. you're you're taking in a certain emotion because it it's it's about emotional states. That's right. right. So if you're writing a song for me you're trying to evoke something in somebody else to hopefully tell a story that's to, right to, to to create a change or to just give somebody you know it could it doesn't have to always be all that deep you know it could just be like we're having a good time by yeah it, you know so I mean? basically you take the emotion you first look for what god is sending as far as the emotion mm -hmm. and then you take that emotion and then you internalize it and then you articulate it through music so if it's like a heavy song yeah. you'll feel like heavy emotions if it's a happy song you'll feel happy and then you'll find words that are like constructive for the music yeah and, that's and, dope and that's a big dope. um a big way that you can like kind of directly right get into that is is to just understand like how emotions are represented to you so like wow a color or or like a certain memory right like facts any of those memory and, and a lot of times there's a, a therapeutic aspect to songwriting as well right so that's what the, i'm trying to get to yeah the, the process for me is the same as playing a solo or it's it's this like okay there's something that exists in this emotional world i need to bring right. it into my body and like maybe it's a color or i can say oh i feel it here i love and, that you know like a, a happy emotion like if, if i think okay what's a a good memory i had like okay i feel like it's there's purple wow. right here and i can kind of like get that once you get the color you can get into it and then the words start to kind of come come yeah that's so crazy because i used to be a songwriter i used to want to be a musician and write music and the way that i used to write music was that I would think of what do I want to say? What's the message I want to say? Who do I want to speak to? What's my audience? And then I would think like, what type of song do I want this to be? Yeah. And then I would put myself in that emotional state. And then I would start creating lyrics intentionally. Yeah. So instead of me like waiting to feel something, I would intentionally create it. Like yeah. I would like make myself think of something happy or sad mm -hmm. and then take it from there. But yeah. it's so crazy. What would you tell somebody who's trying to do songwriting? You could look in this camera and they want to do songwriting, but they're having like a mental block or a writer's uh, block or something. What would you tell them to help them out? So, so the biggest thing um, with any creative work is there's there's the craft okay uh, right and so that's if i'm writing that's okay you give me a random word and especially like rappers are really good if you freestyle off the dome right like it's okay how can i create something right here from this thing that's a craft thing do you freestyle i do but i probably <laughs> can i hear so come on no this is the freedom experience we keep it a stack come on right, let me let me hear the, something the freedom experience I've never done this on camera, so hey. I'm a little bit nervous, hey. but it's okay. We can work it. I'm hey. not sure if people will judge me, but I don't care because I'm not a book. Come on. Well, maybe I am, but you have to read me a little bit. Take a second look. Come on. You get into it. You can see that you can be something, anything you want to. If you write it, you can see that the emotions that you have in yourself okay are are sometimes hard to access when you're writing right Ooh. so oh so, he tied it back into yeah. the question ah, ah, i seen that I, I slipped through. <laughs> <laughs> right so yeah so so you bro is wow if okay. you're trying to do like try to write something that you don't care about first or so, try to write something mm. the, the biggest tip that i could give like direct write Writers. something terrible write a terrible song wow because if it at the end it probably won't be all that bad but you'll wow. get over your your yeah, writer's yeah. block. So mm -hmm. sometimes you have to filter out the garbage, like yeah. write all the garbage, write all the stuff, and then eventually the good stuff will uh, pop up. Yeah. That's yeah. really good advice. I like that. And even for like a business owner like myself or anybody else, if you're trying to get something or accomplish it, just start it. I yeah. always say the best thing you can do is just start and then eventually you'll reach that destination. So how important is your relationship with God when it comes to music? Like how do you translate God and music together? For me, it's it's everything, um, because Facts. like it, right, like it, existence is worship. So, Ooh. so music is such. Hold a, on, existence is worship, and I believe in something like life worship. Yeah. So you're saying just by me existing, 
I'm worshiping God. Yeah, even even wow. the rocks cry out, right? Wow. Like, because it, it 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 testifies to to the glory of of the Creator. Creator Come on, right? Come on, and, speak. And, and that's the good. That's the good, bad, and the ugly. Speak. Come yeah, on. That's, that's everything. That's what I tell people. So many people are embarrassed of their past, but to God, it's all one beautiful masterpiece of His divine nature of what He created. Yeah. And eventually, you get to that perfected image of Jesus that God has for you to get to. So there's no condemnation. Yeah, and, and the so for me with with music, like yeah. the, the the more that you can hold that image, so that mm. you know there's a certain like the the cultural construct of we get together and worship. Yeah. there's a power in that. Like when we were worshiping before. Yeah, like, whenever we was just together. It's huge, right? Like yeah. we, we're we're creating this energy that the, the spirit is moving in in all these all of our bodies to like create something, and so music allows that literally the rhythm you know allows you to get in sync like it's not a metaphor it's literally yeah music puts you in in the presence of god mm -hmm. so you relate music as like an entryway into the presence of god yeah. and it's so crazy because the bible says enter his courts with praise and thanksgiving so yeah. it's like you enter into God's courts in the spiritual realm through praising him, through thanking him, playing music, whatever, life worship. That was so beautiful. So, bro, I want to ask you, uh, can you sing something for us? Yeah. Like anything like acapella. I know that you like different music, but anything you want. Yeah. Um, let me see. Oh, to Jesus. Come on. I surrender. Oh, to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. Live. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. I surrender all. <laughs> Bro, get, bro, get out of here, bro. You're in here praising, worshiping, yeah. ushering in the presence of God. Bro, this is what I'm saying. It's so important for you not to be shy to get in your gift if you can sing, dance, whatever you can do, just do it. Like, it's worship. Bro, thank you for that, bro. I can't wait to see you perform. Now, that explains to me why you're a vocal coach. I can see the different like ways you play and do different things. What is your experience like with vocal coaching? Because he teaches music. First of all, who do you teach music to? Um, so a, a lot, I have a lot of different students in a lot of different contexts, but I also teach um, at a nonprofit called Center of Life in Hazelwood, okay. Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, and it's, it's an after school program. Um, so we have some younger kids and yeah. some high school kids who are, we're, working on jazz and, and different improvisation. Yeah. yeah. And I think we were talking about this and you were telling me most of the kids, the younger kids were like black kids. Mm -hmm. So Drew is in the city and he is making a difference in the black community. You know what I mean? And I just want to break that stereotype of how like every white person is against black people. I think that we have real people boots on the ground in the midst of it, really helping kids of an ethnic descent like myself to break through those barriers and tap into their purpose. So what is it like teaching them kids? Uh, it's amazing, man. Like they, <laughs> they, they teach me more, Ooh. right? Because like it's, you know, music is such a natural thing. There's yeah. a, especially singing, you know, and, and you see it even with some of the younger kids, like you, you could see in real time some of that trauma, like uh, mm. somebody saying, oh, you can't sing, you don't have a voice. Yeah. So, so when I see that kind of thing, it's really to try to say like, that's not true. Like, if you can speak, you you have a voice. Come on, um, bro. Right? And, and that's a new thing. Like, people used to sing, you know, it's recorded music is only Just, yeah. around 120 years or something Facts. like that, right? So it's like where a singer is like this thing that can't <laughs> be attained, you know? And, <laughs> yeah. and obviously, you know, people have different gifts to a degree, but I think, like, 
you know, the voice is something that we can operate and ry rhythm and drum. So, so with the kids, like it's amazing how you can give them just a little bit of, of, of something and they'll run with it. Like they'll, <laughs> it, it's all about that, the rhythm aspect. Like yeah. they, they're in it. How did you get that rhythm just through music growing up? Uh, so I, my background, you know, in church was not, uh, not very rhythmic based, yeah. right? So this is something that I've kind of had to learn yeah over the like i said when i got into music i was editing stuff that i was doing i was editing my performances yeah and and so you know that's a, maybe a whole longer discussion about yeah quant, like they, they call it quantizing music right so okay any of you producers or musicians so it's like there's a grid right okay one two three four and oh i heard of this yeah so when you're in the in your software, you can put it right on that grid, right? Yep, so, to line it up whenever you're like mixing and matching song mm -hmm. uh, vocals. I know about this. Yep, yep, yep. So it's like perfect robot time. Yep. But like there's something about humans playing together. Like it yeah. moves a little bit, right? And you can mix them both, right? The but, algorithm is like different though. It's yeah. like, it's more like life. Uh huh. There's like life in it. I know what you're talking yeah. about. So that, that I've learned, you know, through... I would say I really picked that up in church over the past five or six years. See, and church, like, everybody be talking bad about church, and I get it. The church do got some stuff with them, but ultimately people be coming in there and, like, tapping into their gifts and learning their experiences, and I feel like church is a beautiful place, so go to church. Yeah. Like, I'm not against church. Go to church. Yeah. You know what I mean? But just don't have that religious spirit about you, like, walking that freedom. But I wanted to say you also teach high school kids. Yeah. What's the difference with teaching the younger kids and the older kids? So the younger kids will do anything, try anything, right? Once you, <laughs> once you hit. Yeah. Seven, childlike yeah, faith. Exactly. Right. And that that's it. And then once you get seventh or eighth grade, you start getting, you know, like with me, it was the guitar. Okay. I, I'm a guitar player now, right? You yeah. Start to get that identity in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that that's um that's the big difference I would say. So mm. I think like what I try to encourage high school students is I to love that. keep exploring, and even I try to encourage myself to like not get stuck in any one identity because mm. like life is like, it's continually taking up your cross, right? Like dying to self, it means like your conception of yourself, right? Yeah. So that's, um, yeah, that's, a t you know, and we all go through those stages. And I know. just, I just end up talking to you before we were even like live on camera. And I was telling you that I felt like God's spirit was telling me that you're going through a season where you are dying to yourself and yeah. nobody really sees that part, but yeah. you are elevating in the spirit. And the reason why God is having you go through it is because he has generations and people for you to reach that unless you die to yourself to that degree and become that humble, he can exalt you. Yeah. And the Bible says if you humble yourself, he will exalt you. You're humbling yourself and God is exalting you. I can only uh, imagine what God is going to do with your life, bro. The impact yeah. you're making now, like behind the scenes, God's going to bring that to the forefront. And you're going to see this video and watch this prophetic word is being spoken over you. God is going to take you from the back to the front because he's built your character for it. Yeah. That's what's happening. Yeah. And, and I've been so fortunate and blessed to have people in my life that, that I, that model that. And yeah. so, so I would say like to anybody out there, like those people are there. If you, if you ask and, and pray in that yep. direction, yeah, that, it, it, you know, it might not even be the people that you think or that, you know, but it you right? never know. Like I would have yeah. never even, this is like, but that's amazing. And I just wanted to be able to honor you like that in front yeah. of the people and tell you, man, I'm proud of you and that it's making a difference. And even Drew's going to help me learn how to sing. So I rap a little bit, but I sing a little bit too. And Drew's going to help me master or mix these voices. And we're going to put some, uh, what's it called again? When they make you sound better on the singing track. Reverb. Oh, auto tune. Auto -tune. Reverb too. Yeah. <laughs> we want auto tune my voice a little bit. And man, who knows? I might end up dropping a mixtape. You know what I'm saying? The Freedom Experience mixtape. Yeah. But bro, so I always like to close the show out with words of wisdom. I always like to ask people like, what are your words of wisdom? What do you like to leave people with? What would you say? Um, I would say listen to the small still voice. Um because hey, uh, uh, you know, all the stuff that church, like he, he was saying, right? Like go to church, be there. But through all of it, the exact like path that, that God has 
for your life comes in that small still voice and it's super hard probably increasingly to cut through all the noise mm -hmm. of your attention right like it's it's a constant fight for our attention there's companies that spend billions with a b of dollars to to capture your attention and so if you can start to find three or four four minutes here and there to just yeah. close your eyes and and breathe and just Mm. hear that that small still voice and and you you'll you'll know when you when you hear it because it, it doesn't it's not loud it'll give you that first step you know towards it doesn't matter where, where you're at or, or how dark it is it'll give you the first step towards the light and if you take that first step you'll get another one and another one which leads you to your freedom experience Hey, bro, this is so crazy to me because God says that he will light your path. Yeah. He will light your path before you. Like he is the light of life. And if you're in darkness and you don't know where to go and you're confused about your life, Jesus says, like, listen, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. As you follow me, you'll follow the path that I created for you. And what you said is so important. It's the small voice. You have to listen, turn your cell phone off, turn a freedom experience off, turn everything off. Just get with you and God and listen. And he's going to give you, like you said, that first step, then that second step, then that third step. And next thing you know, you'll be sitting here on a freedom experience talking about your journey. Well, y'all know what mine is, man. I always tell you it's time to find freedom. It's time to find God. Let's go, man. Stick around. Drew's going to perform something for y'all. And I love y'all family. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Peace. What's up, y'all? I'm Drew Bayora, and here's a song I wrote. Wonder if I'll come to regret Rewinding That dusty cassette Relic from a bygone era An invitation to share In the pleasure and pain Of our strange ancestors Without a name And so he goes But does the record show can I find my place here? How can I find my place here? How can I find my place here? Searching for a source of respect By fighting A forbidden past remains open Mistakes closing in Through sunken days the music plays The song of weeping But find our place here how can we find find how can we find our place here but does the record show the things we feel and know the freedom experience.